Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the static NAT with the JWeb Wizard Learning Byte. So here is our example. In this example, we have a few different devices I want to point out. First, we have VSRX1, and VSRX1 is connected to the server using the Gigi001 interface. And then VSRX1 is connected to the internet using the Gigi000 interface. And I also want to point out that the server address is 10.1.1.100. Now that's the internal address. So that's our internal network. And the address on the interface that is pointing towards the internet for VSRX1 is 10.10.1.2. Those addresses will be very important as we set up the static net. And then we have the user that is connected to the internet using the 192.168.1.2 IP address. And so what do we want to do? Well, we want to configure static NAT on VSRX1 to allow the user to access the server. Now that sounds a lot like destination NAT. And in that instance, it's basically the same thing. However, if we set up static NAT, that's going to allow the server to initiate communication to anything on the internet because static NAT is bidirectional. Now we could set up a source NAT rule and then a destination NAT rule to basically do the same thing. But what we want to do here is we want to use one function, in this case static NAT, to enable bidirectional communication. So the server can initiate communications to the user and the user can initiate communications to the server. And then with configuring this, we want to use the JWeb static NAT wizard to do that for us. So let's go ahead and jump to VSRX1 and we'll get into the JWeb and get this going. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And let's go ahead and collapse the device settings. We don't need that. And then we'll open the security settings. And we'll go to NAT, then we'll go to static. Okay, so here is the static NAT workspace. And here we could create a new role and we could set it all up manually. But we do have this really cool wizard that will do a lot of the work for us and we just need to enter some values. So let's go ahead and do that by clicking the launch wizard button and it launches the NAT wizard. And here we can select source destination static. And so with this, we want to select static. And the thing I want to point out here as well is there is a graphic on the bottom that'll help describe, help you visualize what type of NAT we're trying to configure. And so you can see here, there's a description that says static NAT packets from to the private network are translated to addresses in the public network address space. A one-to-one -one address mapping is mandatory. And then there's a little more information that says public network interfaces. Subnets belonging to the public network address space routed to the gateway and mapped to the addresses in the private network. So we're going to have bidirectional communication. That's what we're looking for. And so let's go ahead and click start. And here is the start of the wizard. We do have to click the plus button or add button to add a new rule. Okay, so we're adding a new static NAT rule. Let's just call this static NAT. LB for learning byte. And then we have to determine a traffic direction. We can select zone or interface. In this case, we're just going to stick with zone. And then we're going to select the untrust zone as where the traffic is coming from. And then we're going to specify a destination address. And this destination address is going to be the interface address for the public facing interface on VSRX1. And that interface address is 10.10.1.2. And then what are we nadding to? We're nadding to 10.1.1.100. And this might just seem like we're natting in one direction, but what this does is this sets up a reverse static NAT rule by default. So it will translate the reverse as well. Click next. Okay, so that's basically it. We set that up. We're saying the static NAT rule, we're going to match on the destination of 10.10.1.2. And we're going to NAT to 10.1.1.100. Let's go ahead and click the commit button. And it committed the configuration. Now we're asked if we want to exit. We're gonna select yes. And if we select static and add again, we can see the rule set that we configured. And if we can select the rule set, we can see that there's a rule here. It populates the rule in selected rule set section. So keep that in mind. You gotta click on the rule set to be able to see the rules. That makes sense. You can have multiple different rule sets. So we're not gonna put all the rules in the bottom section here unless we select the rule set first. Okay, so let's go ahead and attempt to communicate between the server and the user. Okay, so here is the user. Remember, this is the user that is connected somewhere on the internet and they want to reach our server that is behind VSRX1. 
Let's go ahead and attempt to communicate with ping. So remember, we have to communicate with the external IP address on the internet facing interface on VSRX1, and that address is 10.10.1.2. And fantastic, we can see that the ping is going through. That's great. So let's go ahead and jump to the server. We'll cancel that ping. Let's go ahead and jump to the server. So we said that this needs to be bidirectional, right? So let's go ahead and attempt to ping the 192.168.1.2. That is the IP address of the user. And we can see that the ping is going through. And so that's great. We have the reverse static NAT working in this case. And the first ping we did from the user is static NAT. This is reverse static NAT from the actual server. Fantastic. So let's leave those pings running. And let's jump back to the JWeb interface and have a look at things. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface. Let's go to the monitor workspace. Then let's go to NAT. Let's go to static NAT. All right, so here it shows our static NAT rule. And we can, if we had multiple rule sets, we could change it up here. We can just select static NAT LB rule set. It's the same thing if we select all since we just have the one rule set. But here we show the different parameters and statistics for this rule. And we can see it's coming from zone on trust. We see the destination address of 10.10.1.2, host address of 10.1.100. Uh, we don't have a host routing instance, and we have some session statistics. So we have successful, failed, current. We can see we have some current. We have a bunch of successful. We have no failed. And in the bottom here, we have an interactive graph that allows us to hover over and find out more information. We can see that you know it's top 10. Uh, there's only one, so of course it's gonna be in the top 10, but we can hover over it and see the name. We can see how many hits it has. It has 604 right now. That will auto refresh every 30 seconds by default, so keep that in mind. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show is the flow session table. All right, so here we can look at the session table and we can look at the, uh, the flows that run through the session table. And so I'm going to select ICMP as the application, or rather the protocol. Click search. And we see we have a few different sessions. And we can see that uh, the top session we have here is 10.1.100. Now that's coming from the server. And then the destination is going to 192.168.1.2. Then we see the next session is coming from 192.168.1.2 and going towards 10.10.1.2. So that's the user, and that's going towards the external IP address of the VSRX1 device uh, of the Gigi000 interface. And so we can see that we have bidirectional communication set up using static net. Now, the one thing that you really can't see too well here is what is actually happening with regards to what is being translated to what. And so you do have to jump into the CLI to be able to see that. So let's go ahead and bring up the CLI for VSRX1 and we'll take a look at that. All right, so here is the CLI for VSRX1. Let's look at the session table and we can see some entries in the session table. And you can see that the first entry that I'm going to highlight is starting from 192.168.1.2 and it's going to the external IP address on VSRX1 of 10.10.1.2. That's great. And then we can see the 10.1.1.100 address replying to 192.168.1.2. So we can see the 10.10.1.2 address is being translated to the 10.1.1.100 address. And then let's look at the next flow that I'll highlight. We can see here that 10.1.1.100, which is the server address, is sending traffic to 192.168.1.2. And then 192.168.1.2 is responding to 10.10.1.2. So we can see here that the 10.1.1.100 address, source address, is being translated to 10.10.1.2. So we currently have static NAT working perfectly and allowing bidirectional communication between the user device and the server. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure static NAT using the JWeb static NAT wizard. And then we demonstrated how to verify static NAT using JWeb. And we also used the CLI to look at the session table to see which IP addresses were being translated to what. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, 
industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.